So on this slide, we want to talk about Hilbert basis theorem. So the theorem is essentially a corollary of another theorem, which is that if a ring R is Noetherian, then uh, if you append a variable x to it, that is Rx, it is also Noetherian. So let us write this down. If a ring R is Noetherian, then Rx is also Noetherian. The corollary of this theorem is the Hilbert basis theorem. Okay, so the corollary of the above theorem is the Hilbert basis theorem. So let us write this down. And uh, we will prove this theorem on the next slide. So on this slide, we just want to collect some facts or consequences of this corollary or the Hilbert basis theorem. So what is Hilbert basi basis theorem? So for any field K, so this K is any field uh, not necessarily closed. So for any field K and any uh, and for a given N, an integer, a positive integer N, this is a Noetherian. K x1 comma x2 all the way to xn is Noetherian. Now the proof follows by induction. Uh, very easy. So you just uh, keep on adding elements to it. If Rx is Noetherian, this would imply Rx comma Y is Noetherian. Okay. So the next corollary, which is uh, immediately relevant. Every affine algebraic set so you fix a a fine algebraic set x of a n this can be defined by finitely many polynomials So uh, this just follows from the above corollary, but uh, we will just write down the proof of it, which uh, actually should not be written down because it is, uh, yeah, it is just rewriting what the statement of the corollary. So you know that ideal of x in this k x1 in this polynomial ring of n variables where k is not necessarily closed is finitely generated. Yeah, this is from the Hilbert basis theorem. Yeah, because k x1 comma x2 all the way to xn is Noetherian. Noetherian condition essentially means that every ideal of the ring is finitely generated. So you fix the number of elements n which uh, generate the ideal where each fi belongs to the ring k x1 to xn. So x is, uh, so you just write down what x is. So uh, notice that at the start of the algebraic geometry series, we defined the algebraic set by collection of polynomials which could be infinite. And so these fx could be infinite. So as a consequence of Hilbert basis theorem, this infinite collection of polynomials is now just brought down to a finite collection of polynomials. That is the beauty of the theorem. So you have brought it down to finite collection. So that is the end of the proof. We want to make two important remarks. So the first remark is, notice that if you have kx, yeah, if k is closed like this, you have kx, now this is a PID. So therefore every ideal of kx is generated by a single element. Yeah. 
Yeah, so for this case, we take k as closed. Second, if you have something like kxy, so you have a polynomial ring in two variables, then there is no bound for the number of elements in an ideal. Yeah, so the number of elements in the ideal will be finite. So the number of elements in the ideal will be finite but we cannot a priori give a bound for it. So uh, let us give an example so that this becomes more clear. So say ideal generated by these elements xr, xr minus 1, y. So degree of every element is r. You can say xr minus 2, y square all the way to yr. So you, so th these are r plus 1 elements. So, so you notice that the ideal generated by these elements cannot be generated by less than r plus 1 elements. Yeah, so for degree 2, you would require 3 of these. If r is 2, if r is 3, you require 4 of these. And if r is 4, uh, four then you require 5 of these. So it cannot be generated by less than r plus 1 elements. And that is precisely what remark 2 means. So on this slide, we we discussed the theorem we talked about in the previous slide that if ring R is Noetherian, Rx is Noetherian. So the proof for the proof, we fix an ideal I in the ring Rx and we arrange the elements of the ideal I according to increasing degree. So let us write this down. So you have an ideal I in ring Rx. And our objective of, of this uh, theorem or of this proof is to show that this ideal i is finitely generated. So this ideal i, so you have a sequence of elements, yeah, arranged according to increasing degree. So where f1 is of the least degree. So F1, I should say not Fi, F1 is of least degree. So you have arranged the elements of ideal I in a sequence. And our proof will be done if we can show that I is generated by finite number of elements because then Rx will be Noetherian. So let I be greater than 1. It's not I here. I is greater or equal to 1. So you see if first I elements f1, f2, f3 all the way to fi, if they do not generate i, if they generate i, we are done. We have taken a finite number of elements and they have generated ideal i. So if they generate i, we are done. If they do not generate i, they generate some other ideal i, subscript i. So then you choose an element fi plus 1 which lies in the bigger ideal i but not in this smaller ideal generated by f1, f2, f3 all the way to fi. And this is of least degree in this set. Yeah, because you have already arranged the elements of ideal i according to degree, you can find this thing. And this is very important because we are going to contradict, contradict this statement. Yeah, contradict this uh, choice. So you need to keep this in mind. Now we choose leading coefficients of the sequence. So a1 is leading coefficient of f1, a2 is leading coefficient of f2, a3 is leading coefficient of f3. All those elements which we arrange in a sequence according to increasing degree. So we take their leading coefficients. The leading coefficients obviously lie in ring R. And these leading coefficients say generate an ideal j. Now since ring R is Noetherian, this infinite series a1, a2, a3 
so on. Instead of this infinite series, we have a finite number of elements which generate J, precisely because all these AIs lie in ring R and ring R is Noetherian. Now our claim is the coefficients which generate the ideal i are precisely corresponding to those polynomials which generate ideal i. That is it. So if you determine which coefficients generate j, then the polynomials which have those coefficients, they generate i. So proof by contradiction, suppose not. So suppose you have an fm plus 1 element which lies in ideal i, but yeah, so it lies in ideal i and it is therefore not generated by the f1, f2 all the way to fm. So see, we have written suppose not. So obviously fm plus 1 is not an ideal i. So you take its leading coefficient am plus 1 in j. Now j is Noetherian. We have seen that j is generated by elements a1 to am. So am plus 1, you can write it as a linear combination of elements a1, a2, a3, a4, am, where each ui or in this case a uj lies in ring r. Yeah, just because j is Noetherian, since j is an ideal in ring r and ring r is Noetherian. Now we write another polynomial g. Yeah, so g is a linear combination of fj's. The only difference is that you have uj, fj and then you multiply by x raised to power of degree of fm plus 1 yeah, minus so it is x raised to the power degree of fm plus 1 minus degree of this fj's. So you have multiplied this by x raised to power of degree of fm plus 1 minus degree of fj. Now the precise reason is that as a result you will have m terms each having equivalent to degree of fm plus 1 yeah because yeah each equivalent to degree of fm plus 1 so because degree of fj will cancel out with degree of fj and what you will get is only degree of fm plus 1. So you see that degree of g is equal to degree of fm plus 1 precisely because we have kept this exponent x which is raised to the power of degree of fm plus 1 minus degree of fj. So degree of fj cancels out and each term is of degree of fj. So as a result fm plus 1 minus g lies in ideal i. You know g lies in ideal i because ideal i obviously contains element f1, f2 all the way to fm and therefore their linear combination. And we started by saying that fm plus 1 is also an ideal i. So their difference is lies in ideal i. But notice that the degree of fm plus 1 minus g is less than degree of fm plus 1. This is because the leading terms cancel out. Now since the leading terms cancel out, leading term of am plus 1 is leading term of fm plus 1 but it cancels out with g because g also has the same leading term. Now we have a contradiction because we said fm plus 1 is of least degree. Yeah, least degree which is uh, not in this f1 to fm. Yeah. So this is going back to the first principle we said fm plus 1 is of least degree not in this combination. Yeah, but we have just found another polynomial fm plus 1 minus g which is of least degree not in the combination f1, f2, f3 all the way to fm. So notice that fm plus 1 minus g is not in the combination f1 to fm. and uh, we have said that fm plus 1 was of least degree not in that combination but we just found a polynomial which is of lesser degree than fm plus 1 and it is still not in the combination f1, f2 all the way to fm and that is what the contradiction is.